Hey there guys and welcome to another Factorial Friday Facts discussion number 276 of Belt Item Spacing and Script Rendering and I'm joined again by Afflixian. Hello everyone. So, we got a belt buff. Guys, this is pretty much what this is, is belt item spacing. This is a belt buff which is awesome. Um, now, what does this actually entail? So, uh, basically they're trying to clean up some stuff in preparation for 1.0. And one suggestion that came up was to adjust the belt throughput from its unfriendly 13.33 items a second for yellow and the 26.6 for red. Um, blue was actually a nice round 40, but those two were quite annoying. So, um, belt throughput is determined by two variables. How far the belt moves items each check and how much space there is between each item. There's a visual requirement the belts only move integer number of pixels every tick, so that is one, two, three pixels for transport belt, fast belt, express belt respectively. Uh, this means the only allowed way to change transport belt throughput is by changing the spacing between items. The spacing currently is 9 pixels between items. Uh, the fact that each tile is 32 pixels and that 9 is not a factor of 32 explains the odd throughput number. The spacing also leads to some undesirable, and undesirable behavior, such as when using the circuit network to read the belt contents. Uh, sometimes the belt can fit 8 items, sometimes it can fit 6. And the count will fluctuate between the two. Um, so you can kind of see here this thing, this is how it currently is. These lights are flashing back and forth because it's fluctuating um, between those amounts. Yeah, and those lights are for two, four, six, and eight um, items, respectively. Right. Uh, and then, uh, so at this point, it's quite obvious to reduce the spacing to eight pixels, which is a factor of 30, 32, and gives a nice 15 items a second, which is what we have done for 0, 017. Uh, so this makes yellow belt be 15 items a second, red belt be 30, and then blue belt be 45. So it's a belt buff, and then also just rounds out the numbers, which is really nice, makes calculations way easier. Um, and visually, you can see there's not much difference. If you look really close, you can tell that like on the 017 picture here, things are a little closer and overlapping a bit more, but it, I actually think it looks a little better. They're just a bit more compressed. Yeah, the easiest thing to tell is that the bottom wire on the circuits is overlapping in the 017 picture where it's not in 016. Right, exactly. That's what I was looking at, too. Um, so, uh, basically, with spacing 8 pixels, belts can now always fit exactly 8 items, 4 on each side. So, for instance, reading a fully compressed belt gives a reliable result, which is really nice. You can see no flashing lights. And the overall change gives a 12.5% buff to belt, provides nice round integers for calculating factory requirements, and removes a few oddities. Um, and the next step they're considering is tweaking the furnace recipes to match the belt speed, but that's a consideration for another day. So pretty much the main downside of this is that if they don't tweak the, the smelting recipes, this will change the smelting ratios for stuff, which uh, I believe you calculated what they would be now, Afflixian. Yeah, if they leave the for the smelting recipes unchanged, then uh, for iron and copper, you would need it would go from twenty four to twenty seven furnaces per side for stone furnace to yellow belt or steel furnace to red. Right. And then for to smelt steel, it goes from one hundred and seventeen furnaces to one hundred and thirty two furnaces. Uh, that said. Uh, in the comments on the thread uh, on the forum, uh, V suggested that they could change the smelting recipe for iron, copper, and stone brick from 3.5 seconds to 3.2 seconds, and that would keep the ratios where they currently are. And then obviously right. steel, steel would go to 16 seconds to be exactly five times iron. Yeah, so... Uh... I, th I think that would be good. I mean, even if they change it, it's not that big of a deal. And keep in mind, guys, it's not a nerf. It's just because the belts can now carry more stuff. But uh, they may end up changing it. I mean, it'd be a very easy, quick change for them, I'd imagine. It's literally just changing the uh, craft time of those items, or the smelt time, rather. Yeah. Um, there was one concern on the forum that was, uh, what if this leads to oh, well, we're making this change to keep ratios good. Well, now you're breaking other ratios and other, like, this slippery slope effect of that. Um, but... Well True, although I don't really see how that's actually breaking any other ratios. I mean... 
No, I mean, if, if they make other changes that break ratios, do they also have to fix the ratios there, too? Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can consider that, too. Um, yeah, way, that's I just something that. that it's something to think about. I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that um, they should consider. Right. Uh, so that's that. That's a really that's a really awesome. We're getting a belt buff. You know, they can carry 12.5% more stuff now. And uh, now we're going into script earnings. So this is a ton of information, but basically it can be summarized in a few sentences. Um, I'm just going to read the first part of this first paragraph, basically. Uh, so from Bilka, um, the last few weeks has been working on a system that allows models to easily render geometric shapes, text, and sprites in the game world. Like many modding features, the implementation of this rendering was pro uh, prompted by an interface request. Uh, when you first saw it, you know, I wasn't really sure that adding a whole new API for it would really be worth it at all. But then a few months later, some more mod authors requested similar stuff. Um, so after further discussion, you decided to start working on it. Um, and of course, one does not simply invent a new system without first finding out what the system should be able to do. So. Uh, you know, with help from people on the mod making channel of the Factorio Discord, uh, he got some assistance there. And you can see he started with a rough design document, um, if you want to check that out, uh, that lists the desired features without considering the implementation. Uh, so basically, Design documents are important in software. Got to have them. Yeah, very much. So it basically just like outlines, you know, everything that's wanted without considering how it's actually going to implement. Um, so the current implementation of script ring boasts eight different object types, the basic geometric shapes being line, circle, rectangle, arc, and polygon. Additionally, sprites, lights, and text can be drawn. Uh, one of his main aims was to make it as flexible as possible, which was achieved by making every single property of the render objects changeable after creation. One example of this is that the size of or orientation of the sprite can be changed without destroying and recreating it. Um, so previously, basically, they would have to create mini entity prototypes which had, which had sprites with the desired orientation or size and then switch them out to change the orientation or size. Um, but this fixes this. So basically, you know, the summary here is that um, now modders and stuff can put things on screen without actually having to, like, mess with the game engine and create entities for them is my understanding yeah it's just a way to quickly draw on the screen and it, it's not actually part of the game it's part of the the render right uh and that i mean that pretty much just sums up all of this um but you know combined with some other uh you know modding additions you know there's a lot of interesting possibilities as, as you can see here um, is they're issuing a move command and then also drawing on the screen the actual pass the biters and spitters are taking, which is really cool. Yeah, uh, and this basically opens it up to allow for a whole new host of new mods. Yeah. Yeah, which is really great. You know, mods keep the gameplay fresh. It's always interesting to see what people come up with. So overall, I think a really good addition. Yeah, this uh, is good. Yep, I guess one last thing to mention is if there are modders watching this, um, to think about what rendering options you would want um, that would be useful, and you can go suggest them, on, suggest them on the forums if they aren't already implemented, um, you know, just so they can keep adding features and stuff like this. But that's pretty much it, guys. Belt buffs, which is awesome. The script rendering thing, which is also awesome. More mod possibilities, and uh, that pretty much covers it. So yep, short and sweet compared to last week. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that one was a doozy. Uh, but unless you got last thoughts, I'm going to end it. Nope, that's it. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. As always, leave your thoughts and questions below. And until next week, we will see you later.